All right. Uh, but it's a good guideline. Shit. That was a good start. Uh, the next good word would be adverse. Adverse. A very good word. We've had this before. What part of speech is it? It's a adverb. <laughs> it's an adjective. Really? Okay, can you give me something like a collocation? Something that should always come to your mind with adverse is adverse. Effect. Effect. Thank you. The adverse effects of, for example, Smoke. smoking. <laughs> I knew that. Drinking too much. Whatever. So the adverse effects. <laughs> it means the bad effects. You know, for effects, we also have side effects, right? Mm -hmm. So you take pills, take pills, but every pill, every medication, it has its side effects. So if I say the adverse effects of global warming, the adverse effects of smoking, the adverse effects of something, <clears throat> Now, I want to say smoking, please help me with the smoking, first of all, what is the verb for effect? So effect is the noun, right? The effects of smoking, that's a noun. What's the verb for it? Affect. Affect, affect right? So we have effect, affect, no. Affect with a schwa. And effect, they're very close. Effect and effect are very close in pronunciation. In fact, in fact, they're almost the same. So effect and effect. We some would say effect and effect. I'm mean, like with an e thing with an a uh thing here. So this is very important because most people confuse, make mistakes when it comes to these two. What are the ad, some of the? Can you mention some of the adverse effects of smoking? Mm, lung cancer. Lung cancer. Yeah. Lung cancer. It's one of the small adverse effects of smoking. It's the biggest. Yeah. Is the biggest? Money. It costs uh, a lot of money. Some respiratory. Respiratory problems. Respir yes. yes. Respiratory. Respiratory. Yeah, we will have. So these are some of the not side effects, because side effects we use side effects for something that is actually good, but it also has some side effects that are unintended effects, right? Unintended, right? Unintended. You know, unintended. <laughs> Anna. What? Sorry, bro, I'm teaching. Unintended. Unintended. There's an N. Yeah. Unintended. What is unintended? You don't expect it. Something that is not, that was not your intention. That was not something you intended. For example, this drug is supposed to make you good, make you better. But there are also some unintended effects, the things that were not intended. So these unintended effects are side effects. The effects are unintended. They're not intentional. Hmm? Not intentional. Not deliberate. Unintended. So this the unintended side effects of something. So that's why side effects and adverse effects are not exactly the same. 
you take a pill to cure you, to make you feel better, but that pill also has some side effects. Some bad effects, some negative effects on your health. Adverse is always bad, and we'll talk about it in just a bit. And unintended is different from unintentional, but not intentional, right? But that's just a little different. So if something is not intentional, is not deliberate, <coughs> not on purpose, right? I didn't do that on purpose. It wasn't her fault. She didn't do it on purpose. She didn't do it on purpose. Yes, hubby? What is on purpose? On purpose. On purpose. On purpose. You were not doing that on purpose, it just happened. It was not intentional. Yeah. Just happened. So what are the side effects of smoking? No. The adverse effects means the <coughs> bad effects. To affect, if something affects to me, on me, can I say on? on. Can you say something affects on no. me? Something affects me. It affects me. It Remember, affects if something me. affects you, secondhand smoking, secondhand smoking. affects everyone in the room. Everyone in the room. And more so than the smoker himself or herself. So, affects everyone. It affects you, it affects me, it affects everyone. Now, affect, you don't need a preposition after effect. Affect no preposition effect on me. But it has effect on me, right? But that's the, that's the point. That's a very good point. <coughs> but does it have any effects on? To have an effect on. To have an effect on someone, but to affect someone, it will have, it has no effect on me, it will not affect you. Will this new law affect us? The question is, will the new law affect us? Or does this new law affect us? Does this new law affect us? Does this new law affect us? Yeah, we will. I'll talk about that. That's a good point. So, <clears throat> just give me one moment. Yes. Uh, you see, in this book, many of these words will be discussed. For example, effect will be discussed here. Impact will be discussed less than 11. I'm putting them all together. So when we go on, you will see those words, and you have also seen them before. Um, first of all, secondhand smoking, if I need an adverb here, what would that be? Seriously. 
you know, I want to make something with this. Adversely. Adversely affects everyone in the room. Now, if you write this, something adversely affects people, what happens is, if you're writing for any test, TOEFL or IELTS, this definitely raises your score. Instead of saying some very childish things, it has bad, it is bad. It's very bad for our health. No. You need to raise that a little bit. It adversely affects also our health. It adversely affects everyone in the room, and more so than the original smoker. Do you know secondhand smoking? We have chain smoking, secondhand smoking. Secondhand smoking is when I'm not smoking, when she smokes, and I'm sitting in a room, or when I smoke, and she sits there. That maybe sounds better. <laughs> when I smoke, and everybody's in the room, so everybody will be suffering. Everybody will be affected by the adverse effects of my smoking. So, first, adverse, adversely. Adverse weather conditions, that's, that's something that we hear all the time. <coughs> Adverse weather conditions. So, next time you want to say bad weather conditions, say adverse weather conditions instead. Like we also have extreme weather conditions, right? Extreme weather conditions would be like a tornado or terrible conditions that are so hard to. But adverse weather conditions. So the team played. In, they had to face adverse weather conditions. The game was canceled due to adverse weather conditions. So we have adverse weather conditions. Remember adverse weather conditions. Remember adverse effects of something. Remember, something adversely affects something else. The new law will adversely affect millions of undocumented immigrants. The new law will adversely affect the students who come here uh, using a student what visa? There's a visa for coming to Canada. Work uh, study visa. Work study visa. So now we have also a noun that's called adversary. What is adversary? Adversary. The United States <coughs> is Iran's number one adversary. Means what? Adversary means uh, enemy. Enemy. This is not just competition. It's more than that. Adversary. Also in political campaigns, Obama says, "My adversary." Here is his rival. My adversary, it's a kind of campaign enemy, right? I 
That's his number one adversary. So I can say adversary. 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 Okay. So if you, that's the adversary. And of course we have adversarial, not very important. But we have enemy. So adverse effects of something, something adversely affects something. An adversary. Now, speaking of enemy, just a few words about that, and we'll go to effect and effect. Please do not forget the fact and effect. Very important. <coughs> so, uh, So we have enemy. What's a noun for enemy? Enemy as a noun. As a noun. And the state of being an enemy is enmity. Animosity. Antagonism. So I would say the degree of animosity, enmity, antagonism between the two, I can say countries, I can say two brothers, I can say two he is my sworn enemy. Sworn enemy. You know that. So enmity, animosity, antagonism, these three words, they all mean being an enemy. Enmity. Animosity between, there was a lot of animosity between Vietnam and the United States during the Vietnam War and after that for years. <coughs> There are some differences between the three, but they are very close. Enmity is exactly the noun that comes from enemies. Two enemies, what's the situation between the two enemies? Enmity. I don't understand the degree of enmity between these two brothers. When two brothers become enemies, and the degree of enmity is just too high, and you don't understand. Animosity between two states, two countries. The antagonism, which is also a little different, less. And of course we have hostile and hostility. You also have the word hostility. Have you heard hostile? Yeah. And if you hear about hostilities began, World War I hostilities began on, so hostilities would actually mean actual war when there are bullets fired and things like that. World War I hostilities began on that day. It's good to know animosity, enmity, antagonism, and hostility. What, which is the opposite of friendship, right? Now, 
I'm going to take a bite of this and take a look at these three words before calling it quits for now. I'm going to topic per speed. How do you say ad adversity? Uh huh, adversity. Adversity, but adverse. <coughs> Thank you for, for that, because adversity is something I loved up. Adversity. Adversity. Shows true friends. Because adversity is a time when you go through hardships in life, right? So you know hard times? When you go through hardships? Life is full of ups and downs, right? We say the thick, thin, the thin and thick, the thick and thin of life, thick and thin of life. Sometimes it's like thin and thick or thick and thin. Have you been through thick and thin? The thick and thin? <coughs> through thick and thin? Some words look big, they're not that big, and if you use them in your writing, especially in your writing, that helps a lot. I mean, the vicissitudes of life may sound, oh, this is a big word. It means ups and downs of life. But ups and downs are so informal, and it's pretty much like thick and thin of life. You know thick and thin? If you say with them, we <coughs> thick and thin together, After all we've been through, after all we've been through, are you leaving me after all we've been through? After all we've been through? It means after all the things that we have experienced together. The good parts and the bad parts. Avi, what exactly are you doing with that stuff? Lards? Ask me. Forget about that one. Because then you uh, miss the ones that are. So, after all we've been through, you can hear it in many songs. I'm going to say, after all we've been through. It's all the things that we've had together now you want to leave, for example, come back after all we've been through. So this place we're talking about the ups and downs and thick and thin of life. So adversity is a good litmus test. You know litmus test? What is litmus test? In, in chemistry, if they want to see if something is an acid or base, acid or base, they use this litmus test. And right now, if they say it's a litmus test for truth, litmus test, uh, test for honesty, litmus test for friendship, what is the litmus test? Or sometimes they say the acid test for friendship. Adversity is the litmus test for friendship, for true friendship. Because in times of adversity, or when adversity strikes, 
It's the true friends that stay with you. Adversity is the hardships in life, right? Hard times. In times of adversity, true friends are the only friends who stay with us. Those who were here when we talked about friendship, do you remember what types of friends leave us when we have times of adversity? The friends who are with you only when everything is okay. We have fair weather friends. <clears throat> who are with you only when the weather is fair. Only when you're happy and you're, you've got money and you're got a nice car and let's go have fun. It's a weekend. Oh, let's call a hobby. He has a car. He's got money. Let's go out with him. When hobby spends all his money and he's broke, nobody would call him. So those guys are fair weather friends. They're with you only one. But True friends are with you in times of adversity, during adversity. So adversity, also they say adversity makes a man. Yeah. Adversity makes or breaks us. Breaks us. Makes or breaks us. You know it's make or break for me? If you say it's make or break, it's uh, do or die. Sometimes I say this is do or die for me. I should either do it or die. It's make or break. Adversity either makes you or breaks you. Either makes you a stronger person. You've heard the expression that says, what? Well, yeah, what doesn't kill you, or kill me, makes you, or will make you, stronger. So what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I still have problems with this. Are we stronger because of all the things we tolerated in life? Is that strength? Or are we some hurt people who lose their feelings bit by bit by bit and lose the childhood beauty and all that innocence? Every little bit of this that happens to us, we lose a little bit of a compassion, a little bit of a warm, childish, beautiful feeling inside us. And we come, you see you know, those people are so experienced and have seen everything. And nothing really seems to hurt them anymore because they've seen worse. Uh, the guy says, I've seen worse. I've seen better. But I'm not really sure if that makes us really stronger. That's the word. But um, they say whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. What doesn't kill me makes me stronger. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So adversity, hard times, hardships, hardships in life. So that's ad what adversity means, right? Adversity doesn't mean like enmity, hostility. So adverse conditions, it basically means adverse conditions of life, adversity, <clears throat> adverse conditions, adverse conditions, not just weather. Adversity is a great litmus test for true friendship, true friends. It shows us who was our true friend. Adversity either makes us or breaks us makes us stronger. The ups and downs of life, that's nice, that's 
that's easy to remember. Thick and thin of life, that's easy to remember. We've been through together, that's easy to remember. And if you want to remember something for me, remember the vicissitudes of life. And the spelling is hard. Every time I write it, I need to double check. But somehow I get it right every time. But it's I'm like, oh, I got it right. The vicissitudes of life. The vicissitudes of life. So the vicissitudes of life are the ups and downs of life that happen to us. So if you ever say this or write it, you impress people. Vicissitudes. And it's important to be able to pronounce it, right? Get your tongue around. Vicissitudes of life. Uh, three words that we asked, and after that we want to talk about our greenhouse. And also talk about our house a little bit. Remember? <coughs> So, we have influence as a noun, influence, effect, and impact. As verb, these are nouns, as verbs, it would be influence plus a verb for influence? Influence. Influence? Influence. Uh, influence would be influence again. Effect will become? A fact, an impact will become impact. Nothing happens. The only word that changes here would be this. But influence is adjective, would become influa. Influential. I'm just not sure about the spelling. He's the most influential person in my life. Very good word. Yes. Influential people. People with influence. Effect would become as an adjective. Effective. And impact become impactful. But I don't want you to learn this. Those two are good. So, for influence, I was influenced by influenced by somebody. Um, when, when when we're talking about musicians, for example, we say Chopin, who was the influence in his artistic life? Uh, people are like that, right? Their influences. Influenced by, or my influence is that professor, or that artist. He's the one who influenced me. If I ask you, Tui, who has influenced you most in your life? Who has been the biggest influence in your life? My father. Your father. Chris? Brother. Your brother? My grandma. Grandma? Really? Yeah. We'll talk about this a little bit later. It's nice. It's, a, it's an actual topic for IELTS. Yes. Dad. Dad. Sabrina. My mom. 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 Mom? My dad. Dad's and mom's and brother? That's very that should be a very good brother. Older brother? Older brother. Grandmother. Amazing. We should talk about that a bit. Really, right after this. I want to talk about housing, but this is an important topic. The greatest influence in your life, the greatest influence. Who has had the greatest 
or the biggest influence in your life or on your life. So influence, usually it's in influence on. But I can say in my life or on me. Who has been the greatest influence in my life? Who has had the most influence on me, on my character, on my life, and everything? I was influenced by that poet, that musician, that writer. I was influenced by her. This is a little different from inspired by her, right? We have inspired, which is different. That's an inspiration. Inspiration. And we have source of inspiration. Effect. I would say smoking has many effects, bad effects or adverse effects, but I would <coughs> never say to me that smoking has influences. No. You would talk about someone's, the influence of Hollywood, not effects, on a society. But you would, because an influence is not something physical that you can see. You can say that the side effects of smoking, which would be lung cancer, which would be, oh, but you don't say that that's the influence of smoking. But you can say the influence of a person on you. Hmm? A teacher could influence her students or his students. Friends influence each other. That's why we have bad influence. Say he's a bad influence. Bad <coughs> influence. When we talk about peer pressure, <coughs> now we can talk about the effects of uh, global change, global warming, the effects of global warming. First of all, the word effect is a very broad word. That's why we have cause and effect. So when we say cause and effect, so the word effect is very broad. Anything that's not a cause is basically an effect. Things in the world are either effects or causes. Some effects are also causes of, basically things are both causes and effects. Because everything is a cause and also the effect of another cause. We should find the original cause. They say the original cause is, the religious people believe that the original cause is God. Because if you believe in cause and effect, everything causes something. If this causes this, if A causes B, then B causes C. This goes on and on and on. Sometimes it's cycle, sometimes it's linear. I don't know if it's cyclical or linear. Linear is a line. So line, linear, cycle, cyclical, right? Now, whether it's linear or cyclical, I don't want to get into that argument. But it goes on. So A, actually influences B, B influences C, C influences D. But so A would be the original cause if there's nothing behind it. Egg or chicken is the original Egg or chicken question. Which one came first? The egg or the chicken? If you say the egg, I would argue that it's a chicken. Eggs come from chicken. And if you say chicken, I would argue, well, chickens come from eggs. So which one came first? It's still... The question, in everyone's mind, which one came first? So that's the egg and chicken question, the famous <clears throat> the chicken and egg question, or egg and chicken question, the chicken and egg. The chicken and egg question. So effect is a very broad one. Everything that's an effect of an influence is actually effect. But in speaking and writing, I would say that he 
he actually influences, if especially somebody if influences you at school, oh, there are many bad apples. Who's a bad apple? A few bad apples. Say a few, a few bad, <coughs> bad influence. apples. You know that in an apple cart, a few bad apples taint the whole cart, would make the whole cart go bad. Because apples are contagious of all the, the disease of the apples. So they say, hey, uh, usually you hear this a few bad apples. In the military, uh, some soldiers are doing bad things. They say you cannot blame the whole army for a few bad apples, only a few bad soldiers. That doesn't mean you have to like blame the whole army for that. That's what Americans are saying all the time. But there's so many bad apples there because they're shooting so many innocent people. So, a few bad apples. Now, so, if something affects you or influences you, close. But we never say the side influences of something, the bad influences of a drug, no, the side effects of a drug. But a friend influences you, affects you, nothing. Something affects you. The death of my mother really affected me. The law will affect you. Influence would be different. If a law affects me, the meaning is different. So the law affects me, it means I'll be affected by that law. It means I'm included in that law. If the visa law affects me, it means that this is about me too. Hmm? But what's the influence of... You, you need to learn this stuff in perspective to every single word. That's why I tell you. Because if you're looking for a law and apply that law to this word here and there, it's impossible in the language. It's almost impossible. Impossible is impossible. It's almost impossible. So you need to find every word in the right context that it appears. So you can say that, for example, you, you can't say, oh, influence all those things that are like this, that would be influence. All those things that are like that would be effect. No. You, you should know that, for example, for artists, say, I was influenced by my teacher. Bad influence. We don't say bad effect. <coughs> bad influence, it means like bad kids, bad friends that you have in your life. And, for example, he smokes. Because of, thanks to peer pressure, you start smoking too. That's a bad influence in your life. He goes clubbing and all that, doesn't study at all and stuff. And just wants to drink and have fun every night. That's a bad influence for a kid who goes to school, for a school kid, right? Uh, impact. Impact basically is this. That's impact. When something, a vehicle, impacts a wall. So, that's impact. So, when they look at the, in physics, they want to look at something, a ball hits the wall, and they want to actually uh, measure the force that has been generated upon impact. Upon impact means at the time of impact. Now that's impact, but what's the impact of something on something else means what's the effect? The impact, the negative impacts, or the positive impacts, it means the positive effects of something in our lives. You can also ask about the impact of Global warming. What are the ramifications? Maybe another word. Mm. The consequences. You know the consequences, definitely. The consequences of your actions. Consequences. Or the ramifications. Ramifications. Of your actions. But the consequences of the ramifications of your actions. Ramifications would mean the consequences here. Implications. Um, we need to assess the impact on climate change. 
Higher mortgage rates have already had a major impact on spending. Major impact on spending. Major influence. Major impact. What are the consequences of actions? What are the ramifications or implications of this? So you may hear or see any of these words, the consequences, ramifications. So we'll write this again, ramifications and implications, big words. Um, So, we now know um, effect, effect, verb, influence, influence. Some, he influenced me. I was under his influence. Under influence in driving, he was driving under influence, remember? He was driving under influence. Here we have, we're talking about D-I-U, D-W-I, remember, driving, driving, D-U-I, I'm sorry, D-U-I or D-W-I? Driving, driving, Dri driving under influence, so that is driving under influence, so driving while intoxicated, while intoxicated. While intoxicated. <coughs> Driving while intoxicated. Driving under the influence or what? Now, if you're under the influence of your friends, it means you're influenced by your friends. She is under the influence of her boyfriend. She's influenced by him. Or he's under the influence of his wife. Is influenced by his wife. Or if I ask you to list your influences in life, uh, by degree of importance, he will start from his brother and all the way down to, where's your father, maybe? Number? Brother, father, the rest. Oh. Brother, father, the rest. That's great. You need to know about the consequences of your actions, the implications, the ramifications. So these are big words, but you see them in texts, the ramifications of something. Ramifications means the branches of something. It means the consequences of them. something. Something ramifies. But the ramifications, the implications, uh, consequences. Right. Now let's move on. Do we? Any questions about these three right now? Do you say about influence like if you have bad friends who actually about the pollution environment pollution? No, it's not there. Bad influence is only for friends. So it's like, like if I say bad influence, you know. What did you start smoking? Bad influence. It means I had some friends who influenced me. Mm -hmm. But you can say oh. back. No. Like the global warming impact. The global warming, you can use impact. That's why I'm telling you, use, learn all words in their context. So I would say, uh, you can't say bad impact. That's a bad friend. So if you had a friend, oh, your bad influence could come from TV or even violence movies or videos. That's bad influence. But usually bad influence, if somebody says like, hey, bad influence, it means usually bad friends. And you know who I'm talking about. In that class, you know, uh, Javi's not studying much lately, and bad influence. And you know who I'm talking about. This is, uh, yeah. So learn words and context.